Hello everyone, this is Dr. Hashem Abu Sarhan. I, I will present today a talk about intumus and cataract management, how to tackle intumus and cataracts, all the updates and novelty in this lecture. I hope you, that you will find this lecture very useful to your career. So I don't have any financial disclosures to declare. Intumus and cataract in general is a challenging cataract and the, White cataract represent about 13.5% of worldwide cases. This is one of the papers about uh, the prevalence of uh, white cataract worldwide. However, not all white cataract is intumescent cataract. Some of the white cataracts uh, are uh, hard cataracts, some of them uh, are intumescent cataract. Some of them are soft cataract. It depends. <clears throat> Why it's a challenging cataract? Because there is always a risk of Rex's margin loss. And uh, this Rex's margin loss can extend to the Bossier capsule, leading to vitreous loss and dropping of the lens material to the Bossier segment. Also, there is, there is a risk of poor capsule support for IOL implantation. Also, there is extensive intraocular manipulation that can lead to corneal endothelial damage and loss of the endothelial cells. Also, there is extended surgical time. So, it's a challenging cataract that needs preparation and need good mind uh, before starting the surgery. <clears throat> One of the papers published in Indian Journal of Thermology discussed the preoperative criteria for the intumescent cataract and they highlighted three points. The first one is the presence of a shallow anterior chamber, which is a plus minus. Not all intumescent cataracts will have a shallow anterior chamber. However, most of the intumescent cataract uh, can have a shallow anterior chamber. The second thing, which is the most important uh, uh, definition of this criteria, the presence of fluid vacuoles or sectoral markings in the anterior cortex on the slit lamp. You should always be able to uh, evaluate the intumescence on the slit lamp clinically, preoperatively, not using any uh, other investigations. You should see uh, how is the intumescence a pre-op by evaluating these fluid vacuoles and uh, sectoral markings in the anterior cortex. In addition, the presence of multiple internal aquatic reflection on ESCA, uh, these multiple spikes indicated multiple fluid compartments. So, in intumescent cataract, usually you cannot see the back of the eye, the retina. So all you need to assist the back of the eye doing P scan to assist if the retina is flat or something is there any masses or detachment or something. But always ask to do with the P scan A scan. And when you see multiple spikes in A scan, multiple internal aquatic reflections, these representing a presence of fluid vacuoles, which indicate that this cataract is intumescent. There is a, a good hint represented by Dr. Yudai Devgan, the well-known cataract surgeon, uh, that the more bluish color, the more liquefied cortex, the more intumescent cataract is. And the more yellowish uh, color, the more hard cataract, the less liquefied cortex, and the less intumescent uh, uh, cataract is. Because when you go to the yellowish light, it means that there is uh, fluid resorption happen. So there is no intumescent. However, the more bluish, this bluish tint reflecting uh, fluid vacuoles in the cortex. So if you see a patient with a bluish uh, yellow-white cataract, you may as, uh, predict that this cataract is intumescent. This is a picture of a uh, white cataract with a bluish tint, which these represent the liquefied cortex, and you see, you can here see the sectoral markings in the anterior cortex and the fluid vacuoles. Why also is intumescent cataract uh, is uh, challenging? is due to the Argentina flag sign. This is a well-known described uh, complication uh, due to the intumescent cataract. And the mechanism of this uh, complication is due to the raised intralenticular pressure. This 
accumulated flow inside the lens capsule raise the intralenticular pressure so there is high intralenticular pressure inside the lens and there is also fragile capsule this is a fragile capsule most of the patients usually are elder so it's due to aging process their capsule is fragile so this high intralenticular pressure okay and pressure in the anterior chamber so there is a pressure gradient from the inside of the lens to the outside of the lens causing the anterior capsule to run out so you will lose the rixes so once you do the initial neck for the anterior capsule the lens will decompress and there is this intralenticular pressure and anterior chamber pressure difference gradient lead to rixes extension radially or biradially if it's extended radi biradially it, uh, it causes what is known as the argentinian flag sign and this Argentina flag signs incidence of 8% to 28.3%. So it's common, not, not uh, rare complication. So you need to prepare before doing a and cataract all the maneuvers that we will describe in this lecture to overcome this complication. This Argentinian flag sign was named by Dr. Daniel Mario Pironi, uh, who first described this complication and his video uh, won the award in 2000 uh, American Society of Catering Refractive Surgery and the European Society of Catering Refractive Surgery meetings and uh, he described describe, uh, name, uh, name it as the Argentina flag sign because it's very similar to the Argentina flag sign to the Argentina sign yeah there is uh, once you uh, do the initial neck of the anterior capsule if there is biradial extension of the rixes this uh, inside <coughs> part is the white cataract white cortex and this is the uh, bluish anterior capsule uh, uh, with the vision blue dye stained with the vision blue, uh, vision blue dye so this central uh, white and outside a uh, bluish color representing the Argentina sign. It's named by Dr. Daniel Peroni and uh, uh, since then it's very worldwide uh, known complication of white cataract. However, there is uh, another complication titled as the reverse Argentina flag sign. And this happens if the anterior chamber is overfilled with OVD thalamic viscosurgical devices, as described in one of the papers published in Journal of Cataract Surgery in 2018. And why it's named as reverse Argentine flag sign? Because the mechanism is reversed. The vector of the vector forces are the reverse. In the Argentina flag sign, the high intralenticular pressure compared to the anterior chamber pressure will push the fragile anterior capsule and cause this biradial extension. However, in the reverse Argentina flag sign, the high anterior chamber pressure compared to the intralenticular pressure will also push and causing extension of the anterior lens capsule biradially causing the Argentina flag sign. But because the mechanism is reverse, is titled as the reverse Argentina flag sign. So the main lesson, the main takeaway from this slide that you should not overfill uh, the anterior chamber with OVD to avoid also the reverse Argentina flag sign because the high pressure inside the anterior chamber could also extend this fragile anterior capsule biradially. Okay? And this example, the first example uh, about the Argentina flag sign, this was the vector from the high intralenticular pressure. However, here the vector forces from overfilling of OVD lead to extension of the ca capsule radially. Double big sign on ultra, uh, ultrasonography. So there is a pre-op uh, uh, tricks that uh, make you predict that how much this cataract is intumescent. As we said, that pre-operative cl pre clinical examination of slit lamp, you can see these sectoral markings, 
and you can see these empty fluid pockets, fluid vacuoles that represent the intumescent cataract because it represents the fluid pockets inside the cortex. Okay. However, when you do as we as we as as we said previously, the intumescent cataract criteria definition uh, the presence of multiple internal aquatic reflection on the A scan when you do the P scan you will find double peak sign double peak sign on A scan and this double peak sign representing this sign the, with the red arrow represent the posse capsule and this sign uh, and this uh, peak sign the, with the a black uh, headed arrow representing the posterior margin of the nucleus so there is a gap between them this gap uh, represent, represents the fluid accumulation between the posterior margin of the nucleus and the posterior capsule so this cataract is intumescent and there is high risk of uh, anterior capsule extension this is what happened in the surgery argentina flag sign came again However, in this patient, there is fluid pockets in the clinical examination, but mainly, as, as we told, that this is yellowish, so uh, resolved the fluid happen. Here on uh, P-scan with A-scan, you see that there is one wave, one full spike without gap between of them, and this one wave uh, represents that there is no fluid uh, a trap between the posterior nucleus margin and the posterior capsule so the risk of capsule extension is very less minimal and this is what happened during the surgery there was no extension and the rexus was nice round rexus and this uh, uh, double big sign is a prognostic marker before the surgery for white cataract and was published in the Indian Journal of Thermology 2024. So for patients with intumescent cataract or white cataract, please do uh, <coughs> for them uh, A scan along with the B scan. Now we'll talk about the role of the anterior segment of OCT, which is coming the merging investigation for the intumescent cataract for cataract evaluation so it can help you in detecting the fluids and the lamellar separation between the lens fibers thus better planning better management uh, for the cataract surgery so this is a normal anterior segment OCT as we see here the cornea the anterior chamber the lens the anterior and posterior capsule however in this uh, picture of anterior segment OCT magnified picture on the lens mainly we see that this is the air stage one of mature cata intumescent cataract with representing the early lamellar separation phase as we see here that there is lamellar separation between lens fibers however there is no bulging of the anterior capsule and there is no fluid collection uh, just posterior to the anterior capsule the second phase of the mature intumescent cataract is uh, more lamellar separation, more lamellar separation between the lens fibers, bulging of the anterior capsule with fluid collection, but minimal fluid collection uh, behind the anterior capsule. And this represents the uh, established lamellar separation phase. So the uh, phase one, early separation, uh, early lamellar separation phase, uh, there is no risk or very minimal risk for uh, capsule uh, tear capsule uh, running out however in this phase the second phase where there, where, 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 is, where there is a complete established uh, lamellar separation with uh, mild bulging of the anterior capsule and uh, little uh, fluid pockets behind the anterior capsule there is a risk <coughs> of uh, anterior capsule running out however not uh, not uh, uh, as high as the second, the third phase uh, that we are telling now. This is the third phase, which representing the liquefaction, which is there is lysing uh, of all lens fibers, uh, dramatic bulging of the anterior capsule with uh, huge fluid pockets behind the anterior capsule. And this uh, cataract is very, very risky for uh, rexus related complications so anterior segment OCT helps you 
and better planning and management for the cataract. And this patient, as we see here, the anterior segment of CT was done showing uh, almost established lamellar separations with mild bulging of the anterior capsule and there's fluids behind the anterior capsule and this phase also this picture however for the cataract there is just very mild lamellar separation there is no bulging in the anterior capsule no fluids pockets behind the anterior capsule so anterior segmentosity can help you in preoperative assessment for the cataract well, what we said before about the clinical examination, fluid vacuoles, sectoral markings on the anterior capsule, and also we talked about A scan along with the B scan about the double peak sign, and also we talked about the role of the uh, anterior segment or CT in the management of cataract. All of these are a pre operative uh, test. There is intra operative test that uh, you can predict from this list that this cataract is in Tommy Center or no. And this uh, novel observation was reported by Dr. Surab, uh, also a very popular cataract surgeon, and from his YouTube <coughs> video published in his YouTube channel. Uh, as you see, when you inject visco, uh, visco press this means that you inject visco and you press the anterior capsule. So it's a visco press test. You will inject this coat and you will press on the anterior capsule. If there is reflection from the anterior capsule, as you see here, the circular reflection of the anterior capsule, it means that not, not uh, a high intumescent. It means that there is an, uh, that the uh, intralenticular pressure is relatively not uh, high. And this is the explanation. If you inject uh, any OVD, uh, and the intralenticular pressure is normal. When you press the anterior capsule, there will, there, there will be a reflection from the anterior capsule because uh, against this pressing. Okay. However, if you didn't see, if you did, if you don't see this reflection on the anterior capsule, then this means that the, the intralenticular pressure is high. That resists the pressing uh, technique from your side. Okay, and this is the explanation also. There is high intralenticular pressure forcing, contradicts, resisting your pressing on the anterior capsule. So there is no reflection like a balloon. No reflection on the anterior capsule after uh, injection if it's caught. So this is intraoperative assessment for the intumescence, for the intralenticular pressure. Is it high or low? It's actually a good observation.